Well, good morning. morning. Welcome to Word Camp Atlanta. This is my first time um, at this Pacific Word Camp. Um, I am excited to say they're going to have a Word Camp Birmingham, Alabama this year. It's going to be sometime this summer if y'all want to head over to Birmingham later. Uh, So, uh, like Daniel said, um, my name is Rachel Carden and I'm a web developer and designer at the University of Alabama. Um, I've been in higher education now for almost 10 years. Uh, Worked at three different universities. Uh, So, um, I obviously um, have a lot uh, of experience in higher ed, but I I also have a lot of love for it. It's a really great environment to work in. Does anybody here work in higher ed? Awesome, like awesome, okay. Uh, So you know, uh, um, a lot of institutions, they're just like little little communities, they're like little towns, and you have all these people working together um, for the same goal, so it's a really great environment to be a part of. Um, uh, As he mentioned, there we go, a little animation, fancy. Um, I am the founder of WP Campus, which is a community and uh, initiative for those who use WordPress in higher education. You do not have to be in higher education to be a part of WP Campus. Um, if you, we just have people that, um, there we go. Oh, apparently my animations were not synced up. But um, uh, we, just, we have a lot of people in the group who just want to help and be a part of it because they love WordPress or they love education and they want to help. And so um, you can find information at WPCampus.org. We have a thriving Slack account where we all chat. And we have a conference planned for this summer in Sarasota, Florida, um, which we're really excited about. And our call for speakers is open right now, and it closes on Monday. So if you want to get in on that action, the time is nigh. Uh, if you do, if you are interested in speaking and you don't know topics, talk to me because we have, we have a list of ideas that we, I'm welcome to share if you're looking for ideas. So this is where I work, University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa, beautiful campus. We have, um, we are really growing right now. We have close to 40,000 and growing students. Uh, just one campus, so it's a little crazy. Um, beautiful though, like 200 acres. Um, I, like I said, I've been in higher ed about 10 years. I started out at Mississippi University for Women as a graphic designer over in Columbus, Mississippi. Small, beautiful, old school. Um, they don't. They teach men, but <laughs> they won't change their name. Uh, so it's interesting, a uh, little campus. <laughs> uh, I then worked at Samford University over in Birmingham for a few years. Um, and uh, now I've been at the University of Alabama now for um, a little over five years. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, CMSs out there. We all know that. Um, here are some of kind of the popular ones in higher education. Um, Omni Update is big and growing. Um, and I used to use Ektron at Samford. Um, those are, I know that Ektron um, uses uh, .NET. I'm honestly not confident what Omni Update uses. Um, Hannon Hill is also very popular. And then we all know, of course, about Drupal and Joomla. So basically, what I want to talk a little bit about today is why WordPress? Um, why uh, is WordPress um, used in higher ed and why is it great for higher ed? Um, I personally believe that higher education um, should invest in open source um, and in the community that it provides. Um, it, it encourages openness and collaboration and community. It encourages education. A lot of us learned web you know, off of these open source platforms, and it is something that higher ed should take advantage of. Um, unfortunately, around, you know, at least in this part of the country, uh, web education is not really big in higher ed. It's not, there's not programs here. Uh, maybe in some small, I know there's some um, like small kind of like community colleges that'll do it, things like that. It's not, there's not a program at UA. Um, and so, and I hate that. And because of that, we have trouble hiring web people. We have, any, anytime there's a web listing on our campus, a job listing, it takes usually on average about six months to fill. Um, because there's just not a, there's not a pool of them. There's not a good groundwork laid um, in our area for them. And it's, it's sad and I hate it and I'd like to change that. Um, and so, uh, so anyway, WordPress. So why WordPress is great for hiring a few things. First cost, um, obviously WordPress is free. Uh, that doesn't mean it is completely free to host it and th- things like that, but that's fairly um, affordable. Um, you know, things like using PHP and all that stuff. Um, even, you know, there's lots of great free plugins, um, and even the premium ones are, you know, they're f- fairly affordable, not that crazy. Um, you can get some really good hosting, things like that. A lot of universities self-host 
Um, if, you've, if they're big enough and they have the resources, we do. Uh, we have a pretty big um, IT department that does all our hosting, and so that's internal. But a, a lot of universities, especially smaller ones, um, they'll use you know, other companies like WP Engine and other um, to do their hosting and take care of that for them. They don't have to worry about it. Um, like I mentioned, community, um, the open source is a really great reason. Um, you know, it it's encourages innovation and it's easy to use and it, you know, contribution is open and democratic. Um, it's really great for a higher education environment. Um, if you're not familiar with higher ed, it's, you know, like I said earlier, it's a lot of little units working together and a lot of little silos, um, which can be good and bad, but, um, but uh, encouraging the, these groups working together, you know, and so using these kind of systems that are open um, and kind of helping to uh, share information between these units and stuff like that is a really great thing in higher ed. Also, it's flexibility, the ease that you can add to it and extend it, you know, like the plugins, stuff like that, how easy it is to use WordPress as your core, but go in and extend it for your specific, you know, custom applications, um, you know, and all the plugins and stuff like that. Um, a real big thing um, that I really use a lot is the user management. Um, basically, um, how a lot of higher ed works is uh, you have someone like me who sets up the website and sets up the theme and then manages the plugins and then it's handed off to a secretary or <laughs> an assistant director, basically people whose website is their duties as needed because um, they're not web professionals. Um, it's not even in their job description, but someone in their department has to do it and there's not a web developer for every department and so WordPress is great in that user management. Um, I, just, I just call it distributed editing. Uh, we, I, am, I am the sole web developer for an entire division, which has over 20 departments and numerous programs. I have a portfolio of 60 websites, and I'm the developer, the designer, I'm the user testing, I'm the QA, I'm the project manager, I'm everything. And so having a system like this that can really let me um, find point, you know, the managing all the like, users and their permissions and things like that um, is really helpful. So I, always, I love this comment. Uh, so we, we announced WP Campus back in the fall in post status and uh, someone commented, it will be a long way to go for WordPress to enter higher ed. And my buddy Curtis uh, commented and basically pointed out the fact you realize that actually WordPress is used um, at a lot of higher education institutions. Um, so far in WP Campus, over 200 institutions are represented and growing. We've only been around since the fall. And so we, 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 we get, you know, a handful of new users every day and people that are joining in and we're finding there was really a need for this, um, this way to collaborate and talk to other institutions using WordPress. Um, have you ever, any of you ever used the iTheme security plugin? No? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's still called iThemes, right? Um, uh, that was actually made in higher education. Um, so a lot of, um, actually, some great WordPress plugins have come out of higher ed and, and built by people in higher ed. Um, I'm not going to sit here and read at all these institutions. I really more made this as a graphic example of, of all of these different institutions that use WordPress. You know, NYU uses it and Cornell, Harvard uses it, uh, obviously Alabama uses it. Um, and so we have just this huge group um, and our, you know, it just ranges from small to large. Um, and uh, so it's a really great uh, community to be a part of, and, uh, and we really love it. So now I'll kind of dive more into how we're using it. Um, I do, I really think that higher education is a really great place where WordPress shines. Um, there, basically, in higher education, we have every user base that pretty much WordPress would touch. You know, we're not just a, like a business or something like that. We have, um, you know, we have the users that are, you know, so the people that are just kind of using it to touch content. Uh, we have the developers, you know, we have the designers, we have the crazy plugin developers. Um, but we also have people that, you know, we have the opportunity to teach people, you know, using WordPress. Uh, so we do have this great kind of, this great environment um, to really flex WordPress and use, um, you know, use it to its, uh, to its best. And so here's just kind of a few uh, areas that we really, it gets used a lot and shines. Um, multi-site is huge. A, a lot of people use multi-site in higher education to have blogging networks, faculty blogging networks, student blogs, things like that. Um, 
Buddy Press is used a lot for um, different kind of social networks and communities. Um, and then the REST API is new, but I really think that higher education is a great place for it, because like I mentioned, all those silos, basically, especially at a place like UA where it's so large, there's, everyone's managing their own website. So it's not on the same platform. Um, but there is a need to share information. There's a need to share news releases across websites. There's a need to share events across websites. There's a need to share course catalogs, and there's a need to share all this information from department to department. Um, but before, it was like, you might could use an RSS feed, you know? And so now, with the API, there's all kinds of crazy stuff that we can do um, to share across the silos and make sure the information gets around. Um, also, to make sure it's not duplicated. Because like basically right now, because there's no way to get it around easily, people copy and paste and put all over the place. Oops, sorry. And then you have horrible outdated information because somebody copied and pasted a policy over here and changed it over here and so stuff like that. Oh, multi-site is basically um, where you can have one, Word, one, one WordPress install but you can have um, multiple sites. So they share the same code, they share the same plugins and things, but they have like one admin. And so you have like, you can basically do subdomains or you can do subdirectories. Um, and so um, that's used a lot. Yeah. Um, so like our, so for example, I'm student affairs, and so our main site, well, it's a multi-site. And so sa.ua.edu is our main site, um, but then we have all our departments in our division or a subdomain um, on that. Do they all have to use the same theme? Um, but you don't have to use the same theme on a multi-site. Um, you don't have to. We do, just because we all have the same template. But you don't have to. Um, there are pros and cons to multi-site. Um, there are reasons to use it, and there's sometimes there's reasons not to. Um, a lot of it depends on your internal governance. Um, we actually did a WP Campus podcast on it a couple weeks ago that I think points out a lot of those. If you all want to go find that later if you're interested. Um, they talk a lot about the reasons to and not to use it. BuddyPress is um, a WordPress plugin that helps you set up like a social network um, on using WordPress. Uh, so I was going to show a few examples of um, multi-site. Um, it's really big in higher education. And so like UNW, University of Mary Washington uses it. <coughs> um, sorry, let me take a sip real quick. They have a multi-site with over 7,000 blogs on it. 7,000 websites using one WordPress install with over 10,000 users on it, which is crazy. And even bigger, um, University of British Columbia has over 10,000 sites and over 30,000 users on their multi-site. And these are generally like blogs, like I said. They're generally, anyone on campus who wants a blog or a website hops on this publishing network and um, gets a website really quick. And they'll usually have like three or four themes to pick from, and um, they usually limit what plugins they can use. You know, they have to be vetted, and because you know you're not going to put some crazy plugin on a one WordPress install managing 10,000 websites, unless you're crazy. Uh, NYU, <laughs> Cal, that's like cowboy coding to the extreme. Um, NYU has the same thing, uh, 2,000 sites on theirs. A lot of the higher ed um, use WordPress to do like news websites and stuff like that, so Berkeley does. Um, I like to follow Chapman University. They, ha they do a lot of great work. Um, they wrote this really great like social, uh, social media tracking plugin that basically, basically all it does is goes, goes out and checks how many times your news article is shared on Facebook and Twitter, pulls that in, and then like, gives scores to your content, so then like, you can order content by its social score. And so like, that way they put like, the most popular article at the top of their page things like that. It's, it's called Social Metrics Tracker. Um, and so that's pretty cool. Uh, in Washington State University, they do a lot of great WordPress work. All of their work is on GitHub, which is really great. All of their work is uh, open source. Have you ever interacted with Jeremy Felt online? He's really great. He's really big into multi-site. Um, so I, I, basically, I don't really have any REST API examples. I just put this in here as a way to talk about it. And I've already talked about it a little bit. But I really think that higher ed, is, like I said, is a great um, use case for the API and how it can be shared and used on network. Um, and so I look forward to um, that fully being in core and more plugins becoming available and things like that. I think it'll be really great. And so then look out for that 
and maybe how you could use that at your university. Uh, another big thing in higher education is accessibility. I just want to touch on this for like two seconds. Um, I'm a big advocate for accessibility. Um, basically, if you're not familiar with that, um, I'll come back to the Stevie Wonder. But web accessibility is basically the practice of removing barriers from your website so that everyone can access your website no matter their disability. And on a day-to-day, -day, what you've probably heard the most about is like adding alt attributes to your images and things like that. So that way people that, you know, are basically people that have vision problems that are navigating your site, um, if there's content that's not text, it can be read to them. And so that's kind of like a base thing. But in higher education, especially if you're a public institution and you receive federal funding, you're required by law for your website to be accessible. And so accessibility is really big. It talks, it's talked about a lot in higher education. And I kind of hope that it'll continue and kind of move outside higher ed. And, I, and, I, and the, the US government is actually kind of starting to make rules for businesses to be accessible. There's something going on right now that like by 2018, um, a lot of businesses will have their websites will have to be accessible. So it's going to start being talked about more and more. I was actually doing a bunch of research the other day because someone asked me about online banking accessibility, and that's how I found all this stuff. And so definitely check it out. Um, but basically, it just means setting up your site so that everyone can consume your content. You might just ask me a question. Yeah. How, so you have 60 sites in, in your portfolio. How do you audit accessibility across all 60 sites? So tool, we use a bunch of tools. Um, so there's, there's um, that could be like, I actually gave a whole other presentation on that last month at okay. Miami. But um, we use something called Site Improve, yep. um, which is a really great tool. Um, it's not free, but it's totally worth it. If you ever, anybody use Site Improve in there? Yeah, totally, yeah, I like Site Improve. We use that. Um, there's also a bunch of manual tools that you can use. There's a bunch of in-browser tools that you can use that are really great. Um, I would look up Pally. PA11Y. Um, accessibility hashtag is A11Y. So, uh, Pally's bad. Pally's great. Um, HTML Code Sniffer's great, and they offer a bunch of in browser tools. So, I would definitely check that out and you can do some quick testing. A lot of good accessibility is just good markups. So if your site is written well, then a lot of it's covered. Then you can use these tools to kind of get the other 20% of the way. Um, so, um, whether you're in here because you're in higher ed and you're interested, or you're interested in getting into higher ed and you're an agency and you're curious about how you can put in the door to work with institutions, and a lot of institutions, um, you know, hire out their web work. You know, not everyone has uh, web developers on campus, so there are a lot of agencies that work with work in higher ed to help them. Um, obviously, there's also plugin developer things like that. You know, excuse me. <clears throat> There's lots of needs and use cases in higher ed that aren't being met. It could be met with like a WordPress plugin or something like that. So I'm just going to kind of use these slides as just chat through some of them and kind of show you some of the ways that people are using WordPress in higher ed. So obviously there's like institutional websites and department division websites. There's a plethora of websites um, and institutions. Everyone needs a website apparently. And so everyone gets a website. Um, lots of micro sites and things like that obviously. Employee directories are huge. I can't tell you how many employee directories that I've built since I started in higher education. Probably at this point four or five. And I don't know why I haven't just made one of them into a plugin, but uh, they're crazy and I love them. The more, the more you can filter them, the better. Um, online versions of magazines are big, and those kind of those needs are kind of being that um, people in higher ed still love their print pieces. They still love their magazines, like their alumni magazines. Because I guess a lot of their alumni are getting the magazines. Um, I'm not, I'm, I have a feeling that I'll hang on a couple more years and maybe start buying now because they're so expensive and they're, and they're finally realizing no one reads them. And so we'll see how much longer that hangs on. But they are kind of catching on to digitizing them and putting them online so that way um, they're slowly making the transition. Like we said, faculty student blogs are big, uh, intranets are big. Um, a lot of people use BuddyPress to make internet and things like that. I've seen a few examples of that. Um, uh, University of Florida Health, uh, their internet is WordPress. I saw a great presentation. Here's a chance to chat with Jeff Stevens. Um, he's really great. Um, he's really funny too. Um, digital signage. Um, 
Basically, you know, the TVs that you see, a lot of restaurants have them now, they put ads on them, but we have them all over our campus. Every building has one, and every summer you feed, it seems like. Um, and they're really great because they cover a lot of uh, needs, like emergency communication, things like that. Um, you know, something horrible is happening or weather, you know, they can put a message up on a screen that you can see from the corner. Um, but they're, so they're, they cover a lot of needs and they have lots of messaging. I don't know of any WordPress plugins that would help you. I know that. Actually, you know, believe, believe it or not, I was dabbling in this. There's, an, there's a digital signage theme. So oh, really? if you're running multi-site, theoretically, you could stand up a site, you could include your content across it, and it just pumps it to a white digital sign. Awesome. So somebody did it. It's free. So. You know the name? No, but just Google it. I mean, it's the only one. I mean, like you said, there's just, one. Yeah. There's just one. I never even heard that. Yeah. Yeah, it's wild. The system we use is horrible. Like it's horrible. When you have to have a PC to software to run it. It's bad. It's so bad. So if y'all want to make a plugin, that'd be great, and uh, we'll get that going at AUA. Uh, so email newsletters. Um, really, you know, there's Mailchimp and stuff like that. Um, Mailchimp can get expensive, and we're actually, um, I just purchased uh, some software called Cindy, if you ever heard of that. It's like, it's basically self-hosted uh, email newsletter software, because it's 60 bucks, and they use Amazon to send the emails, and so it's like a dollar for every, like 40, it's a dollar for every 10,000 or whatever. So I mean, like, so because people were using Mailchimp all across our division, and just crazy hundreds of dollars, and our, our vice president was like, we can't. Is that Cindy with a Z? With an S. Yeah. Yeah. Cindy, S-E-N-D-Y. Yeah. It's, so far it's nice, you still have a on your server. Um, the the, the, the uh, mail editors, you know, it's not going to be as nice as MailChimp, it's not drag and drop, but it gets the job done. Um, it has reports and stuff like that. All I have to say is that while we have, while there are services for things like emails, um, it, it, it can be too expensive sometimes. Um, higher education funding is just not that, you know, you don't have a lot of money for stuff like that. So you're looking to save money wherever and, you know. Um, and so email newsletters is big. People love their emails. I was in a meeting the other day where a bunch of people that send out emails all came together and realized just how many ridiculous amounts of emails we were all sending. Maybe we should try to combine and get that down. Uh, so they love that. Canvas maps and virtual tools, things like that, um, that's kind of, that's big in higher education. People want to see your campus. Um, I don't know of anything that exists for that inside of WordPress uh, to kind of help with that. And I don't even know what you would do per se, but it's kind of yeah. So yeah, there you go. That would be cool. Um, any kind of crisis communication uh, messaging. Uh, I've once built an access control request system, which was really cool. Basically, you know, higher education had tons of buildings, and you had to kind of get the request access to them especially if it's in a building with research labs, because, you know, and so like a system that lets you have basically a workflow where you go in your request access to a room and it goes through a process, and so stuff like that to use a lot. Um, security is big. Um, basically, basically, there's a lot of kind of a stigma around WordPress and security and higher education, and really what the problem is is that people want websites. They don't realize what it takes to manage a website. They get a website set up, and then they realize how hard it is, they give up after a month, and then there's like this website abandoned and sitting out on the campus internet, you know, for two years, and then it gets hacked because it hasn't been updated in two years, and so that happens a lot, and then you get people going, oh, WordPress isn't secure, and it's like, well, no, WordPress is, no website is secure, it hasn't been touched in two years, and so um, security is a big thing that's talked about a lot. It's okay. Um, uh, basically displaying research data, stuff like that. Um, digital asset management, we were having a good chat about this the other day that um, if there was basically the need for like, a really good way to just kind of use WordPress as a digital media library. Um, so that way you can kind of share, so kind of like sharing the content across websites, it's really great to be able to share like digital media across websites and stuff like that. Um, I think there's like, a couple of plugins out there to do um, and so stuff like that. Uh, social networks, so like using BuddyPress, things like that. Um, and then a lot of like learning management. So like using WordPress as learning management system, um, and so like virtual classrooms and online textbooks. And there's like this whole, you know, this whole kind of world of ways to use WordPress in higher ed that's not really being used anywhere else. Um, E-portfolios. Uh, we do a lot of single sign-on with these crazy like 
uh, how you change your banner system and stuff like that. Um, I wrote a plugin that does WordPress single sign-on with a CAS server. If anyone has a CAS server and wants to check it out. Um, and so there's just all these crazy, you know, really cool ways that people are using WordPress um, to help um, in higher education. Uh, I'm writing one now that helps us with policy management um, because, like I mentioned earlier, we just have this weird crazy problem with people copying and pasting policies so they want like a snippet on their website. <coughs> or and so it's like I'm setting up, you know, the API so that they can just pull the policy on their website that's updated from one place and it's not being copied and pasted everywhere. We're having this problem where, you know, we had a problem with like our SGA because they didn't update the, or no, no, they had like every old policy on their website that was Google, Google, and <laughs> someone found an old one. They didn't have any, it was just a PDF they found, and, and they got, they got in trouble because it, it had been updated, but no one knew, C crazy stuff. People love PDFs and Tyra too, FYI. <laughs> 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 They want to freeze their work. For they, for some reason, <laughs> at some point, someone in higher ed got it in their mind that if it's in a PDF, they can't copy and paste it. This is a, this is a true story. The true story. We had to. We were basically trying to tell this guy there's a policy and it needs to be. It needs to be. You know, let's just make it HTML. It's not accessible. So hey, it's illegal. <laughs> and. But he got it in his mind that if it was in a PDF, then people couldn't copy and paste it. And I was like, well, hey, no. You know, I must be talking about boss, and I'm like, but like, but also that's like the opposite of accessibility because if they can't copy and paste it, then they probably can't read it. A screen reader can't read it. Things like that. It's just it's it's crazy um, the things that people believe. Um, some some back people believe. So did you set up all these uh, needs and cases, these needs on WordPress yourself? Uh, like, do I use them? Or? Or did, like, did you set up like registration and like, student pages and uh, company I mean, uh, staff directory? I've done a lot of these things. Okay. I was saying it seems like it would be too much just for one person to handle. <laughs> job security. <laughs> you have lots of job security in higher education. Uh, uh, I haven't done all of these things. Uh, I've done a lot of them. Um, so kind of like what I was touching on earlier though is that there's such a great community that um, a lot of people, if somebody else wanted to build it for their site and then share it with us and then we use it on their site and the kind of that working together attitude, um, that's what we're kind of, that's what we're aiming for. And so I share all these to kind of share with people about these needs that exist, especially if there's people out there that are like plugin developers and they want to get involved. Are there any kind of um, higher ed Canvas is. Um, so SFWP Canvas is. Um, it's a kind of. It's just a community. <laughs> we have a conference this summer. Um, we just started in the fall, and so we're pretty new. But we do. Uh, we started a podcast a few weeks back. So that's every Wednesday at noon Eastern. Um, and we have lots of plans for that, and we have lots of plans for um, like written information online. So there's lots. Of, there's been lots of digital like webinars and stuff, and there's going to be like white papers and surveys and stuff. So it's in the works. It's just it's coming. But then the conference this summer. So yeah. So, so do. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's 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 a growing initiative, and we got lots of big ideas. And it's even international. We have people in Europe that are taking part. There are lots of folks in Canada. We even have some folks in Africa, um, which is pretty cool. Um, so basically right now our main place is Slack and we, we chat a lot. There's, there's, there's really cool chats there every day where people just come in and ask questions. You said you're the only person who manages the whole website? Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I was like, man, that's really cool. No, that would be insane. Yeah. No, that, would, that would be impossible. No, I just did the Division of Student Affairs. Okay. <laughs> it's still huge. It's still huge. It's still too, it's still too much for one person. But no, I did not do the entire university. That would just be, I, I would have made it five years. There's no way. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way. Some universities have really, I mean, like they're small. Like Sanford is small compared to UA. They have like three people that do all the work. For campus. They're like maybe 5,000 students. 
Can, can I follow that up? Because yeah. you and I share a commonality in that we're in very large universities, right? So we're 50,000 students, yeah. right? So just so folks that aren't familiar with that environment, what happens is you'll have a division of student affairs that might fund what they call a webmaster, right? One single role. And, and so like, it, it's kind of cool, like I said, we're having like a, a we're all George, a bunch of us George State here. But like, and, and Hillary doesn't know I'm about to say her name, but Hillary is the webmaster for the College of Education. She is one person, right? So she manages 20, 40 sites, 40 sites these days? 48. Not 48, 48 sites, so she, she shares that commonality. So if you're not used to these large enterprises, there's sometimes a centralized group that provides a lot of, you know, some initial resources and component, and at least we did that at Georgia State, and that's my, my small team. And then you move down to these college and units that might have that one person who runs multiples. Like, you exactly. Know? So it's not uncommon for that to, to occur. Um, some colleges at UA don't even have a web person. Yeah, but, education does. is not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> that, that happens a lot. <laughs> you know, that's just common. A lot of people, I mean, kind of sad, a lot of um, you know, universities, they just, they don't want to invest a lot in the web that much as they should. Some people just don't realize the importance of it that others do. Some do, you know, it's not the same at every institution. But like he's, he's right, a lot of places what really happens is there's like a core webcom office or something. Um, we don't really have a core one. Um, but. Um, they, they generally will do at the main homepage. So like UA.edu, there's a team of people that do that. And then um, it's kind of it's kind of up to um, the way that higher ed is organized is that usually there's divisions, um, and then there's colleges. So that, and so basically it's kind of usually up to the division of the college to find funding for their web roles. Um, some people centrally fund. It really depends on the size of the university and how much they care about the web. Um, ours are not centrally funded. But I think that like uh, Vanderbilt is, I know the people that do look at Vanderbilt, they use WordPress, um, and I think they're centrally funded, you know, Lacey, um, she's awesome. Uh, so it depends on the university. Um, and so, just kind of some stuff that interests OP Kansas people that we talk about a lot. Um, uh, we're talking about WordPress as an LMS on our podcast next week. Um, I'm not too familiar with the LMS, so I'm really interested in that talk and learning more. Does anybody here use WordPress as an LMS? I know of one. You know of one? Got it, got it I think it's growing, it's growing a lot, that particular, um, because um, faculty are learning you know, how to use WordPress and that they're you know, wanting to set it up or something like that. Um, and so it's kind of growing more and more. Um, so some of this is kind of duplicate. Um, yeah, that's, that's just it. It's like, um, I wish that uh, more universities would just kind of invest in um, just a little bit of like web education. That's what I want to do at UA that um, is having some trouble with, but uh, just like having general web education classes, like anyone on campus who wants to come can come. Students or faculty, anybody, you know, we're going to come in this room, you know, every third Thursday and we're going to have WordPress 101 class. And then every fourth Thursday, we'll meet over here and we'll talk about, you know, something else. And just, you know, having that, like I mentioned earlier, what happens is you have basically where these websites are kind of, for lack of a better word, dumped off on people that are not trained to use the web. It's not their job. It just someone's got to do it and their boss picked them. And so um, they're kind of, you know, kind of, not necessarily alone, but it's like, can you imagine if you were not a web person and all of a sudden, you know, someone was like, here, have WordPress. And it's not that it's not that it's hard to learn WordPress, but there's so much more than just managing WordPress. I mean, you can go in there and change words and hit publish all you want, but you know how to write content for the web. You know what accessibility means when you're writing your content. You know not to use things like click here. You know and stuff like that. I mean, who's teaching you that? And so I work part kind of one of my WP Campus initiatives is to kind of help schools do more of that and help with that, and especially with students, so that we can kind of help teach the younger crowd um, when they may not necessarily have another option. We can help them learn on WordPress better than nothing. And so that's kind of something that we hope to do. And we've actually had a lot of traction so far of people that are really interested in doing stuff like that. And so I'm excited about that. Um, so kind of repeating this a lot. Scalability is big. Um, and people uh, talk about that a lot. And and so just kind of being a good administrator. One of our OP Campus top, topic submissions, the title is literally just like how to be a good WordPress administrator. So that you, could, that you could handle and interact with all these people on campus who've never touched WordPress and never touched the web, and all of a sudden you, you're their go-to, you're their resource. Um, 
so that they can do their job. Yeah. Okay, well, that's perfect because um, that was the last slide of just kind of, you can learn more about the campus, you want to get involved, there's a form there you fill out, and we invite you to our Slack, and we'd love to have you join us, whether you're in higher education or not. Um, we have a lot of uh, people in there that really help out, and we take shot of all kinds of cool stuff. And so, uh, any questions? So since you made the, uh, you're the administrator of that whole division, how do you deal with like, people that aren't so uh, trained in WordPress and are cut and paste from Microsoft Word and get them to drop the code in there? Um, really, like, the best thing that I do is just talk to them and educate them. Like, customer service, I mean, just knowing that I'm available if they have questions so that they can, and I tell them up front. Like, I, I sit down with each person and I basically talk about how bad it is to copy and paste the PDF because they do a lot. And um, we cover that. Um, also, as a backup, we have tools that we use, that's like Cytoproof that scan our websites and they find stuff like that and so I get reports. So that way I can go back in and fix it and then tell them why this was bad. And you know, and so things like basically because I'm a one man team, one woman team, um, I can't I can't watch every page. I mean sixty websites, you know, like I can't sit there and monitor everything. And so what I do is I invest in tools that would monitor for me. Um, and so there's lots of plugins out there that will help with some of this stuff. I, wrote, I use Slack a lot, and so I wrote a plugin um, called Rock the Slack Bot that, uh, that sends notifications into Slack when anything happens inside WordPress. And at the, basically, so it kind of, I don't really go like follow up on each notification, but it lets me know that people are in there and they're working. So I know that someone's supposed to be working on their website today, I can see. And I can be like, I didn't get any notifications from Sally today. She was not anywhere. I mean, so I'm kind of spying on them a little bit, but I mean, it's my job to watch. It's my job to watch over these websites, and so stuff like that can really help. But then stuff like Site and Brew um, scans my websites every five days and sends me a report, so I can go in there. It tells me broken links, <coughs> and spellings, and then if, uh, I can set policies, so I can be notified anytime someone actually. Like I, I can go in there set a policy saying I don't want people to use the phrase "click here," so I get a report every time it happens, so I can go and fix it. Um, and then, but then also, like I can give those reports to the user so that they can go in and fix their problems, the ones that they can fix, and it also does accessibility and SEO and stuff like that. That's really nice. But there are lots of other tools that help that will go and crawl your sites and give you information. So I, I pretty much have to use stuff like that because I can't do it all. I can't. I don't. I mean, it's set up. I don't really. <laughs> I'm not a marketing person. I we, we have a we have a marketing pseudo marketing person that watches the analytics, but. Um, so, um, so yeah, basically tools. I mean, you got to invest in some of these tools. I think it's really good to tell them why I'm not going to update the case that hasn't been looked at in five years. Yeah. So yeah. that it helps me convince them what why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll we could have 40 other sessions on how to use Google Analytics to, yeah. to update your site and to control your data. Um, there are some plugins that will help you. Something that I do use is um, something that basically lets me know if content hasn't been touched in so long. Mm -hmm. So if a page hasn't been edited in six months, I can go to the person and say, hey, I need you to look this over, make sure it's still up to date, it's still right, you know, or whatever. And if it's if it's fine, then just hit the fine button, you know, but otherwise fix it, you know. And so that's helpful too because because these people they don't it's not their job, it's not their main job and they don't really honestly care. You know, about the website all that much. Some do, some don't. And so, you know, they, they'll, they'll edit the site and then move on to what they care about and then no one looks at the site in six months. And all of a sudden there's wrong information. And so stuff like that, those tools can be really helpful to keep, help keep eye um, on your stuff. Any other questions? I still have stickers, they might want the sticker. I have these little big Doki Canvas stickers. And then I have <coughs> the Wapus. We have a higher education Wapu, it's adorable. Um, you can see them right there. Um, and so, and I have pens. The Adobe Campus pens that you can come from the lanyard. So show some, show some high ed support. <laughs>